Hello, love. My name is Jennifer Laurel Keller, and this is Open Studio, my show where I help you gain more creative confidence and live a more artistic life. I'm an artist and instructor living in Sacramento, California. Together at my studio and on creative field trips, we'll explore inspiration, art supplies, techniques, and business secrets so that you can bring more joy and success into your creative practice. Welcome back to episode seven and the finale of season one of Open Studio. In this video, I want to talk about one of the most asked questions about being an artist, which is how to price your artwork. This is a topic that I've gone back and forth about. My role as an artist hasn't always been steady throughout my career. There have been a lot of ups and downs, and I've had periods when I was working in the arts in my day jobs, such as a frame designer and an auction assistant, but I wasn't focused so much on my own art. And then there were times where I was making a lot of art and showing it more frequently. So I'm gonna go over 10 factors that can affect your prices. You might wanna grab something to take notes with because we'll be going over some numbers and figures here and you'll probably wanna go back and work this out for yourself. All right, so the first factor in working out your prices is size. This seems to be a more concrete, measurable factor that you can calculate pretty easily, so let's start here. When a customer sees a work of art, its size is one of the first things they'll take note of, and in their mind, they will equate size with price. And I always start with my sizes and then make adjustments after I see what the calculations come out to. So for instance, let's say you have a work of art that is on a 20 by 30 inch canvas. You can multiply those numbers together, so 20 times 30, which is 600 square inches. And that leads us to the second factor, which is your experience and the quality of your work. Quality and experience usually go hand in hand, simply because the more paintings you've done, the more practice you've had, and the more proficient you'll be at painting. So what we'll do now is determine what the value of each square inch is based on experience and quality. And I'm just throwing out rough numbers here. Ultimately, what you charge is up to you. So if you're just starting out, you might wanna aim lower and let your prices grow over time. So let's say you're a newbie and you decide to charge 25 cents a square foot. So take your 600 square feet and multiply that by 0.25 and you'll get $150 and that's your price. Just make sure that you're able to earn enough money to cover your initial costs for materials, otherwise you'll be losing money. As your art improves, you'll begin to sell more work and you can raise your price little by little so that you can earn more of a profit. An intermediate artist might charge 50 cents per square foot. An advanced artist might charge $1.50 or up to $6 a square foot. And by the time an artist is a master, it could really go way up depending on how famous someone is and how much demand there is for their work. Number three is materials. Calculating materials can be tough because many of the materials last for several works of art. One tube of paint could stretch over 10 or more paintings and you might use a brush for two years. So how are you supposed to figure out how much you're spending on materials? materials per work of art. Well, in this case, you'll need to average a little bit or blanket your costs. I suppose you could look at your expenses over the last year and then figure out how many pieces you made and work it out that way, but maybe you didn't use everything you bought, so that's not very precise. So the way I would do it is to start with your canvas because we know that will be used once. And then I would add on an average for the rest of your paint and supplies. Remember, no one is gonna come along and ask for an itemized list of materials. So I recommend trusting your gut on this one and doing what's easiest for you. It's not something you have to stress over, but it is good to have a general idea so that you know you're recovering those costs. And it's also good to keep in mind just in case you upgrade from budget materials to more expensive materials so that you can make adjustments where they're needed. Number four. Next, let's discuss time and details. If you're making really high detailed artwork and you're spending a lot of extra time on each piece, you might wanna tack on an extra fee for how much time it takes to get those extra details completed or you can raise your price per square inch 
if you're doing this with a whole series and applying it to different sizes. And this goes for quick sales as well. If you're having a studio sale and are selling really loose, rough sketches, you can deduct either one lump sum or reduce your price per square inch. Number five, overhead. It's easy to just charge for the size, time, and materials of a single painting, but artists often spend a lot of time and money on things that aren't directly going into a work of art. For instance, do you pay for studio space? Do you spend a lot of time on marketing or, or education? Do you have bills that are specific to your business? Is there a gallery taking a large commission? Those are expenses that matter and need to be recovered through sales. Number six, shipping costs. If you're shipping your art to customers, deciding what to charge can be really confusing. When I started selling online, my first instinct was to research every possible package size and weight and charge the customer exactly what it costs to ship their artwork. But now I've decided that it's near impossible to figure all of that out before the sale. So instead, I decided to do an average cost per size category, and it should even out in the end. Number seven, commissions. If you do custom work, you probably know that they're a little bit harder than your own projects. There's added pressure, there's more communication time, you might need to show them progress images or preliminary sketches, and you might be working under tight deadlines. In this case, you probably want to charge an extra commission fee and possibly even a rush fee if they want it done quicker than usual. Number eight, trust your gut. So now that we've gone over all of these factors, I want you to roll up your sleeves and work out the numbers. Put yourself in a can-do attitude and make yourself the rough draft of your price list. And next, I want you to sit with these numbers and make some little adjustments here and there by listening to your gut. How do these prices feel? Should you round up or down? Sometimes I do a little bit of both. I often notice that my small works seem a little too low and my large works seem a little too high. So I'll bring them in towards the center by just a smidge. I find that sometimes small paintings can be just as demanding to make as big paintings. Do you find that too? So I hope this helps you get an idea of what you should be charging. If you would like to grow your art skills and eventually your prices and audience, I recommend coming over to my website to check out my classes and I'll leave a little bit more information about my color class at the end of this video. And as I mentioned in the beginning, this is the season one finale of Open Studio. I'll be taking a break so that I can focus on creating my next online class. And I found that I can't really focus on class creation and my weekly videos at the same time. There's just not enough time and I get too scattered. So here's what I'd like you to do. First, make sure you're subscribed to either my YouTube channel or better yet, go over to my website and subscribe to my e-newsletter. There I'll keep everyone up to date on the next season of Open Studio, as well as the release dates for my future online classes. And also when you sign up, you'll get a free guide on how to become a successful artist. Okay, that's it for now. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you next season on Open Studio. Much love. Art is magic. It reveals to us the emotions and beauty in our surroundings and within our souls. It can inspire and relax us, make us laugh and cry, and is worth a thousand words. Every artist wants to capture the essence of the scenes in our work, but when it comes to color mixing in your art, it might seem like something's missing. Maybe you seem to be running into muddy colors, or perhaps your paintings seem to lack dimension and end up feeling flat. Or possibly you're not quite sure how to start or which paints to buy. The paint aisle at the art store is a big place and there are so many choices which can be a little intimidating. If this sounds familiar, it's likely that you need more information and practice with color theory and mixing. And the good news is that I can help. My name is Jennifer Laurel Keller. I've worked in the arts for over 20 years as a painter, teacher, a frame designer, and I've also worked in art supply sales and art galleries. What I've noticed from talking with artists, as well as in my own career, is that 
Things can get out of control pretty quickly when you don't know how to get the right colors. Some people think that they need to buy all of the colors because they're afraid to mix at all, and other artists try and save money, but the colors aren't very compatible and they end up wasting paint in the end. I had to learn and work on my practice to be able to mix the right colors, and I've seen countless students be able to do the same thing even when they thought they couldn't do it in the beginning. In my online class, Color Quest, I share all of my secrets to color mixing. You'll learn how to pick the right paints from the art store, save money on paint that you can mix yourself, mix vibrant colors that you can use in all genres of work from abstract to landscapes and portraits, bring amazing light and shadow into your work, create beauty that will connect more with your audience and possibly lead to sales if that's what you want, and your painting sessions will be so much more fun because you'll be mixing colors that make more sense and that you'll be proud of. So stop guessing about color mixing and end the frustration. All you need is four tubes of paint, one brush, a palette, and some watercolor paper. The rest of the materials you probably already own. In this class, you'll get video lessons where we create studies covering the color wheel, complementary colors, analogous colors, earth tones, tinting, shading, the grayscale, hues, and how to pick your own unique palette for what you want to achieve. In the end, we make some abstract art to loosen up and play with everything you've learned. Anyone can take this class. You'll be able to follow along just like if you were right there with me looking over my shoulder as I talk you through every decision and move I make. Plus, as a bonus, you'll get access to the Keller Collective Facebook group where you can stay engaged and get feedback. I offer a 30-day money-back guarantee so there's no risk at all. So come with me on a color quest and I promise you breakthrough after breakthrough will get you on the course for mixing color and light with more joy and ease. I'll see you there.